My name's Carl, this is Pelvic Pain Natters, and this is one of my Friday takeaways. Pelvic Pain Natters are, is a podcast dedicated solely to male pelvic pain conditions, pelvic health conditions. Um, this is episode 36, um, and today I'm just reflecting on the, the final pilot support group that I carried out last week. Um, this was the second of two uh, pilots that I ran just to um, get a real feel for what people are looking for out there um, in terms of a specific male pelvic pain support group um, to iron out some of the uh, things that I noticed and um, things that the participants had suggested from the first group to meet some new guys going through pelvic pain um, and it comes off. So I did the support group last week. Um, if you haven't checked out last week's podcast, episode 35, it was about mental health, um, pelvic pain, suicide and Cipro. Quite a sobering episode. And I touched on that in the support group. One of the reasons I uh, want to set up. Well, what, what I, one of the reasons I'm setting up the support group is to draw men together, to make men realise that they're not alone and that as isolating as this condition can be, that the, it's so important that we do talk, that we do connect, that we do share, that we do support one another. All right? And this is the reason why I'm doing this support group. I've run... I don't know how many support groups now over the past 14, 15 years. Some of them have been face to face. Um, some of them have been online. I ran one during the pandemic, which, of course, had to be online. This is the upcoming um, global support community group that I'm going to roll out internationally um, and get urologists and physios involved, um, as well as some um, charities that are supporting men's health conditions involved. Uh, this will be online, but there are still grand designs to hold face-to-face -face support groups. Uh, patients of mine who's a big advocate for, advocate for uh, support groups um, is just about to put together a face-to-face -face support group in Liverpool in England. Um, I want to do this. I want to see men face-to-face. -face. It's much better. I love the fact we can meet each other face-to-face -face again the last time I ran the support groups during the pandemic, it wasn't possible. Um, but seeing someone in the flesh, um, being in the same space as them, offering live support, like real time support rather than through the the beauty, thank you, of Zoom, um, for which I wouldn't be able to do the support group moving further forwards with the international patients that I'm um, hoping will attend. So it's about using the opportunities that we have available to us. And like I said, support is such a valuable thing. Um, I got quite emotional um, at the end of last week's support group um, because of what the week was, um, because two patients who I'd never met beforehand had reached out to me saying that they're struggling uh, with pelvic pain and that they were considering suicide, that, that one of them had had suicidal ideation, that is... Um, the thoughts and ideas about committing suicide and one had spoken and opened up about self-harm. So it's incredibly, incredibly humbling um, that I'm being reached out to and people feel safe enough to do so. So thank you for that. It's incredibly tough to go through this condition, but you're not alone. And this is the reason why I want the support groups to be front and center. This is the reason why I want more of a global movement so as men everywhere across the globe can feel like part of something where they can chat with other men who know what they're going through, who understand the ups and downs, the opportunities, the threats, the complexities, the uncertainties, the dark days, the glimmers of hope, all of the above. Um, I'm just going to read you out some of the feedback that um, some of the recommendations and suggestions that were made from last week's group. So at the end of the group, I asked everyone to um provide some positive messaging for other members in their group, give them something else to hope for, give them a message that they would like to hear as well. So I'm going to read a very small smattering of some of the um, comments that were shared at the end of the group. 
the next group that will run the next global pain, sorry, global um, pelvic pain community support group will run at the end of June. I'm just confirming the date. I'm just putting together the events page now. If you want to be involved in this as a participant, email me at pelvicpainmatters at gmail.com. pelvicpainmatters at gmail.com. I will add you to the waiting list, the mailing list, sorry. There's only going to be a certain number of places available. If you are interested in this and you want to be involved in this, then email me at pelvicpainmatters at gmail.com. I will get you on that list. Um, I'd love to have you there. I'd love to share some time and some space and some um, some words, some supportive words, some of your insight into your own individual journey with this. Because let's not forget, you are absolutely golden. The information, the knowledge, the experience, the expertise you have in your case, in your own individual case, could be life changing and maybe even indeed life saving for someone else who's going through this we'd love to have you on board all right so here are just a smattering of some of the comments um and feedback it's been really useful and i've picked up some tips and resources to check out it's great to see that i'm not alone Keep going and don't be afraid to look into underlying issues that may be part that may play a part, i.e. stress and anxiety. It gives me the push. Sorry, it gave me the push to start on anxiety medication and take time to stop and breathe through the day. When this condition pushes you back, don't let it push forwards. Go and do the self-care that makes you feel better. This is words of wisdom that the individuals on the group are giving to one another, sharing and reinforcing things that we might feel or things that we've been told from a healthcare professional. But when someone else in the same boat as you is, ta is saying this to you because it's worked for them, that's incredibly validating. Try to be okay with less than perfect. Things are always changing. Don't underestimate the importance of non-physical interventions like meditation and breathing. You're not alone. Please reach out. All, all the same condition with different nuances. Lovely to chat and share. There is a way out. The road is long, but there is a clear end. It was nice to see and speak to other people who completely understand this situation and also good to see that others have made further progress. I am better than I was when all this kicked off and to be able to speak to others was really helpful. Everything we do matters in our self-care and positive mental thoughts. It all adds up. Simply fantastic to share and support each other. This was a great, this was a really great experience. It was definitely a confidence booster, booster. So thanks for putting it together. Well, thank you for everyone who attended. Thank you for everyone who's supporting what we do here at Pelvic Pain Matters. You matter. This has been episode 36. If you're interested in joining us for the next global support group at the end of June, the date is to be confirmed, but it will take place at 12 p.m. British summer time. That's London time and last for about 90 minutes. Uh, I'll put together all the information. I'll do another um, recap on this in the coming episodes um, of Pelvic Pain Natters. But my name is Carl Monaghan. This is your Friday takeaway. Thank you once again. You are the reason I do what I do.